Let's talk about why I never want to live in Massachusetts. What's up, Wolverines? So Massachusetts told California, hold my beer and watch what I do. This is the most anti-gun bill I've ever seen in my life. And I'm not even exaggerating. But before we talk about that, please, please go to Black Swan Prints and buy something. If you buy something there, it helps the channel and you get something in return, which is kind of cool. I have a lot of really cool stuff there. So go ahead and check me out over at BlackSwanPrints.com. Before I give you my expert opinion on this bill, and yes, I'm joking, I'm not an expert on anything, this bill is the most anti-gun bill I have ever read in the United States. There is other gun bills from other countries that are total gun bans that are worse than this, but for the United States, this is the worst I have ever seen. And I'm not saying that for hyperbole or to get clicks or anything else like this. This bill is really, really anti-gun. So let's go ahead and talk about what's in the bill. First, like the CCIA, there is a sensitive area of locations. The sensitive area of locations is basically everywhere. Much like the CCIA, a property owner must post a sign stating that you're allowed to carry a firearm. If they do not do that, it is a gun-free zone no matter if the gun is loaded or unloaded. Also, if the place is used as a place of education, like a school or any type of place where educational classes are held, it is a gun-free zone under this law. Government buildings, whether they are owned, operated, or leased, are gun-free zones. Polling places are gun-free zones. Places where they tabulate votes are gun-free zones. The police can arrest you if they suspect that you have a firearm. Without a warrant, without any probable cause, they can just arrest you, which seems like a violation of the Constitution to me. Also, if you have a license to carry, you must surrender that to police, whether you are carrying or not. So it's basically papers, please. Man, there's some Gestapo stuff going on up in Massachusetts. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the expansion of assault weapons. You know that scary term, assault weapons, that they always like to use? Now, there is a list of things that are now considered assault weapons, no matter how they are configured, including all ARs and AKs. It's almost like someone went to Google and typed in semi-automatic rifles and everything that popped up they pit on the list and then they google semi-automatic shotguns and everything that they found went on the list as well now let's go ahead and talk about the safe storage stuff which is absolutely insane because it's not enough just to have a room that's locked that you can't get into it seems that Massachusetts wants you to have Fort Knox as a gun safe because it says it must deter all but the most persistent of thieves. I guess if Danny Ocean or Dominic Toretto wants to steal your stuff, that's okay. But if anyone else wants to steal your stuff and is able to steal your stuff, then Massachusetts might take action against you. Now get this, they want all magazines serialized. Yes, all magazines must be serialized and registered with the state police. Now, I don't know about you, but I have a couple thousand magazines of all different calibers. If I was to serialize all of that, that would be extremely expensive, and to register it would be really, really hard. I don't even know where all my magazines are. That's how many I have. And if people in Massachusetts have to register them, that is a bad thing. Because if you forget to register it, you are guilty of a felony and you are going to prison in Massachusetts. So it doesn't matter if you're changing an optic or a trigger or whatever you're changing. If you do anything to your firearm, you have to report it to the state, which is kind of crazy and the definition of a nanny state. Also, only licensed retailers are allowed to sell magazines. And if you go into an FFL and your firearms license has expired, the FFL must confiscate that license. Basically, they have to take it, they have to refuse to give it back to you, and then they have to send it into the police. 
then the FFL is required to tell you that you must report to the authorities immediately and turn over all your firearms, ammunition, and magazines. Basically, you must go and voluntarily give up your rights or the jackboots of the state will be on your throat. Also, FFLs are going to be inspected once a year by the state police. Right now, that's handled by local police, but most don't actually inspect them. But the state police definitely will. Now, let's say you want to make your own firearm. Right now, you have seven days to register that firearm with the state, but that's not how it is going to be done anymore. Now, you must get a serial number and register it before you build it. You also must tell the police how you are going to build that firearm, whether you're building it from a PA kit or you're 3D printing it, which the state calls additive manufacturing. So basically, they are trying to clamp down on the 3D printing of firearms and the making of firearms from kits. Also, if you're under 21, you're not going to be able to get a long gun license, which is kind of ridiculous. Now let's get into what is probably the most egregious part of the new proposed law, or maybe the assault weapon stuff is the most egregious part. But this is pretty egregious, let me tell you. And we're talking about the new requirements to get a license. Okay, here it goes. First, you need to take a class that will teach you the safe use, handling, and storage of firearms. The class also must include methods for securing and child-proofing firearms, the applicable laws relating to the possession, transportation, and storage of firearms, knowledge of operation potential dangers, and basic competency in the ownership and use of firearms, injury prevention and harm reduction education, active shooter and emergency response training. You must learn about applicable laws relating to the use of force. Also, you must learn de-escalation and disengagement tactics, which isn't really a bad thing. No, but it shouldn't be required. Also, there is live fire training. How long is this class going to be? I don't see how you can shoehorn all that into an eight-hour class. It must be a really, really long class. The instructor will not give you a certificate. What the instructor will do is take the certificate and send it to the Department of Criminal Justice. They will review it and decide whether to send it to you or not. Only until you get that certificate will you be able to apply for a license to carry or license to own a firearm, which is scary because they will drag their feet on that. I can guarantee you that. They will definitely drag their feet on that. Also, Massachusetts is going to look into micro-stamping. California had a law requiring all new handguns to be able to micro-stamp, but there is an injunction against that part of the law, and the reason is micro-stamping doesn't exist. But I can definitely see Massachusetts passing a similar law, even though they know a court will strike it down. Okay, now let me just say that I don't think that this law is constitutional, and it will be challenged by multiple groups the second it goes into effect if it does go into effect. I can almost guarantee you Massachusetts knows that as well. And I don't think any judge in the country, no matter how far left leaning that they are, will find this law to be constitutional. What Massachusetts is hoping is that if they do pass this law, it will be challenged in district court, which will take some time. And once in district court, the judge will probably strike down the law and give an injunction to whoever sues. Then they are hoping that the circuit court will stay that decision until it can be heard at the circuit level. What they are doing is trying to run out the clock. They are trying to run out the clock until the Supreme Court will flip back over to them. What they are really trying to do is to stick up a big middle finger to SCOTUS and tell them that the Bruin decision was wrong and they're not going to obey the Bruin decision. This is another example of anti gun zealots and whether they be from Massachusetts, New York, New Jersey, California, Maryland, or any other far left state showing that they have a disdain 
disdain for the Constitution, and they have a disdain for human rights. The right to bear arms is not a constitutional right. It is protected by the Constitution, but it is a human right. It is a natural right. It is an inalienable right. And the Founding Fathers were very, very specific on their views on that. And I happen to agree with the Founding Fathers. But the far-left Democrats that control Massachusetts do not like the Founding Fathers. They view the Founding Fathers as old, white, evil, slave-owning men. And they will not listen to what they say. They will not look at their ideas. Yes, the Founding Fathers had some blemishes, but that is just a product of history, and they also do not like the Constitution. They believe that they shouldn't have to follow a 200-year-old document, even though that it is the bedrock of our country, which they are trying to fundamentally change. All right, guys, I hope you like this video. If you do, like, comment, and subscribe. It would really, really help the channel grow. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, I love you. Remember, you all matter to me, and you all matter to each other. Stay safe. Stay together as a community, and remember, stay ever vigilant, stay ever free. Keep in the fight. I am out of here, Wolverine's motherfucker.